Yo, it's your boy Zerk, and today we need to talk about what happens next in this whole Mike and Jeff situation, because I know what y'all are thinking. Zerk, they got exposed. Their careers are over. Yeah, about that. Let me tell you why absolutely nothing is going to happen to these dudes and why that's actually the biggest problem of all. So let's recap real quick. Solomon exposed Mike Israel's PhD as basically a glorified book report that wouldn't pass peer review at a community college. Then Jeff Nippert had a complete breakdown defending it, dirty deleting comments, and basically revealed that evidence-based fitness is just vibes with a citation page. That's a career-ending scandal in any normal field, right? Like if this happened to a doctor or an engineer, they'd be done, finished. Pack your bags, update your LinkedIn, time to become a real estate agent. But here's the thing about the fitness industry. It's not a normal field. It's barely even a field. It's more like a circus where everyone's juggling dumbbells and hoping nobody notices they can't actually juggle. So what's gonna happen to Mike Israel? Absolutely nothing. Mike's gonna be fine. Better than fine, actually. See, Mike's whole brand isn't built on academic credibility anymore. It's built on being the guy who talks about hypertrophy while making sex jokes. He's the Howard Stern of fitness science. His audience doesn't care about his PhD. They never did. They care that he's entertaining, he posts funny Instagram reels, and he gives them permission to do five sets instead of three. That's it. You think the average Mike Israel fan is out here reading dissertations? Hell no. They're watching 60 second clips of Mike saying, stimulate, not annihilate, while making a face like he just saw his credit card bill. Mike could come out tomorrow and admit his whole PAD was written by ChatGPT, and his followers would be like, ha ha, classic Mike. Anyway, how many sets for rear doubts? The man is untouchable because he already pivoted. He went from serious academic researcher to jacked bald guy who's good at marketing like five years ago. This PhD thing is old news to him. He's already moved on. What about Jeff? Now, Jeff, Jeff's situation is more interesting because Jeff's entire brand is built on being the calm, rational, scientific guy. That's his whole thing. He's not the entertaining one. He's not the jacked one. He's the smart one. And he just publicly proved he's none of those things. So what's gonna happen to Jeff? Again, probably nothing, but for different reasons. Jeff's audience is the type of dudes who think reading a study abstract makes them qualified to argue with their personal trainer. They want to believe Jeff is the smart science guy because it makes them feel smart by association. They're not gonna turn on him. That would mean admitting they've been following someone who's full of shit, which would mean they're full of shit and nobody wants that smoke. So Jeff's audience will rationalize it. He was just defending his friend. Solomon took things out of context. Everyone makes mistakes. This is just drama. They'll find a way to make it okay because they need Jeff to be right. Their whole world view depends on it. Plus, just gonna do whatever YouTuber does when they mess up. He'll just stop talking about it. Wait two weeks, post a video about bicep training and act like none of this happened. And his audience will let him because they wanna move on too. He might lose some subscribers, maybe 5%, maybe 10 if it's really bad, but his core audience, they're not going anywhere. But here's the real problem. The reason Mike and Jeff are gonna be fine isn't because they're innocent or because people don't care about the truth, it's because the entire science-based fitness movement is built on sand. Real science has gatekeepers, peer review, replication, if you're a researcher and you publish garbage, you get called out by other researchers and your career takes a hit. But science-based fitness on YouTube? There's no gatekeeping, no accountability, no standards. Just whoever can sound smart enough while having abs. Mike and Jeff aren't scientists. They're content creators who use science language to sound authoritative. And their audience doesn't know the difference because they're not trained to know the difference. So when Solomon comes along and actually applies academic standards to their work, it reveals the whole game. But the game doesn't stop just because someone revealed the trick. The audience wants to be fooled. They paid to be fooled. They built their whole training philosophy around being fooled. You think they're going to admit all that was for nothing? Hell no. Here's what's actually going to happen in the next few months. Mike's going to keep posting. Jeff's going to keep posting. 
Their audiences will keep watching. New people will discover them and have no idea any of this happened. Solomon will get painted as the villain in some circles and the hero in others. He'll gain subscribers from this, but also get harassed by Jeff and Mike's fans. Classic whistleblower treatment. But within a month, two months, this whole thing will be forgotten by 90% of people. Because here's the truth that nobody wants to hear. The fitness industry rewards this behavior. It rewards confident bullshitting over careful accuracy. It rewards entertainment over education. It rewards tribalism over truth. Jeff hired Solomon to fix his programs because they were broken. Then Jeff tried to erase that relationship because having broken programs is bad for business. And he'll get away with it because being good at business matters more than being good at science. Mike got a sketchy PhD from a school that probably just needed someone to pay tuition. Then he built a million dollar company by slapping PhD on everything. And he'll keep that company because the PhD was never the point. It was just marketing. And the science-based fitness community keeps chugging along, citing studies they don't understand, selling programs that are mid at best, and acting like they're better than everyone else because they know what a systematic review is. Nothing changes because the incentives don't change. You make more money being confident and wrong than careful and right. You build a bigger audience by being entertaining than by being accurate. You get more engagement from drama than by education. So why would anyone change? Mike and Jeff are winning. They're making money. They're famous. They have fans who defend them no matter what. From their perspective, they did everything right. The system rewarded them for their behavior. Why would they stop? The saddest part about all this, there are good science-based creators out there. People who actually read the full studies, who understand research methodology, who say, I don't know when they don't know, who correct their mistakes publicly. But those people get crushed by the algorithm because careful, nuanced, here's what the evidence actually says content doesn't get clicks doesn't get shares, doesn't go viral. The market has spoken, and the market wants confident bullshitting over careful analysis. So science-based fitness is dead. Not because Solomon killed it, not because Mike and Jeff killed it. It was never really alive to begin with. It was always just marketing, a way to separate yourself from the bro science guys by using bigger words. But it was the same game, different jersey, same team. I'm Zerk, and I'll see you next time, when probably someone else gets exposed and nothing happens to them either, because apparently we live in a simulation where consequences don't exist anymore. Peace.